one of the finest examples of government corruption you'll ever see. And we couldn't be more proud. It's Late Night with David Letterman. Tonight, Jonathan Winters, reggae singer Judy Mowat, and a farmer who won't change his clocks, Lincoln Burnham. Also, your mail. And this house needs work. And now, a man who feels if we give $100 million to the Contras, we better damn well get a receipt. David Letterman! Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the program, and I uh, hope you're feeling nice uh, around the United States and all of North America, for that matter. This is our Thursday night show, isn't it? It's not so much Thursday night as it is the end of our week. <laughs> Make any sense? I couldn't have put it better myself. Band is now throwing garbage on the... Did you throw that out there, Will? Pick it up, or we're not... Go oh, yeah, the new guy. I'm pretty sure the new guy threw it out. That's a... <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, you know, President Reagan is on his way to uh, Japan, and he's going to be out of the uh, country. I think this is his longest trip since he's taken office, and he stopped over today in Guam on his way to uh, the Far East. I, I don't have a joke here. I finally, <laughs> finally found a good reason to say the word Guam on the show, and I said, why pass it up? I don't think anyone's watching. <laughs> I, I sense that we're doing this in a vacuum. Can you feel it? <laughs> Nobody home tonight, is there, Paul? Do you get the sense? Let me, yeah, let me people... just check here. Is there anybody out there? Uh, <laughs> see, uh... <laughs> nope, they're gone. There's nobody home tonight. We're shooting blanks here. Uh... <laughs> no, what, did, what did I say? I said, we're shooting blanks here. And you, and you made that noise? What happened? I don't know. Uh, the audience made up their own joke. Yeah. <laughs> Too bad you folks could have been at the meeting this afternoon. We... Boy, is it hot in here or what? Is it hot in here? It's hot in here, isn't it? You know, you know, I was uh, leafing through the uh, New York Times this morning, and uh, I came up with an interesting fact. There is no, in the language, the Russian language, there is no word for perky. Were you aware of that? <laughs> all, all right, do you have another one? <laughs> okay, here we go, kids. Say hello to our good friend, Mr. Paul Schaefer. Paul, say hello. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. David, a toast, a toast in the tradition of uh, Vegas toast. Stop that. Just stop that. By the way, this would be a good time to announce that a week from tonight, Paul Schaefer, Paul Schaefer will not be here. That's one week from tonight. That's right, Paul. He has something more important to do than be a part of this show next week. Paul, tell him what it is you're going to do. Uh, I have to attend a uh, dinner in Vancouver, B.C., uh, <laughs> with the Prince and Princess of Wales. Uh huh. Uh, Prince Charles and Lady Charles. Diana. Yeah, I've been invited. I've been summoned. Really, it's a royal. Uh, uh huh. It's a royal kind of affair. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you you won't be able to be with us. Well, as a Canadian, uh huh. Uh, and uh, you know, a a, a member uh, of the British Commonwealth. Right. And as soon as you got your driver's subject, license, you drove to New York City. I split from that, t that town. I split from the country, but uh, still remain, uh, you know. A loyal subject. A loyal subject of uh, Her Majesty. Hot and, uh, in here, isn't it? But a toast. Let me toast. Oh, 
All right, Toast, go ahead, Toast. May you have uh, a, a good ba uh, from your That's back enough. at all. May with the wind and may your son and daughter have a thing and may you always... Oh, okay, your toast Thank is done. Um, here we go, folks. Oh, yeah, tonight is uh, viewer mail night and before we answer our viewer mail, it's time for us to bid farewell to a lovely rare item we've had from the uh, New York Museum of Natural History. It's time to say goodbye to the rough tail, what do you call it, the rough tail, uh, rough tail stingray. So I understand that there are a few words of farewell and it's going to be another exciting magic moment in television. The stingray saying goodbye. Has a week gone by already? Yes, it certainly has. I, the largest female rough tail stingray ever caught by an amateur fisherman, must now return to the museum. But shed no tears for me. My life has been a full one. I am proud of my many offspring, mm -hmm. some of whom I have cannibalized. Mm -hmm. And I am honored to have shared a stage with Alba Ballard and her costumed parrots. But my greatest thrill is knowing that you like me. You actually like me. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you so much. It's been a great week. Hot in here. Uh, it's viewer mail night, and also uh, Jonathan Winters will be here, Judy Moate, and uh, the gentleman who refuses to set his clocks back or forward, uh, Mr. Lincoln Burnham, will be joining us a little bit later. Uh, but now, folks, as we do every week, let's turn our attention to the uh, massive quantity of viewer mail that flows in each week, and let's answer some of these letters for you tonight. Dear Dave, number one begins, could you maybe pull some strings over at ABC and get them to show Superman 2 again? You know, uh, Bob, I'd love to, but I used up all my favorites at ABC when I got them to dump Geraldo Rivera. It's a joke, my gosh, it's a joke. Letter number two, dear Dave, I want to do a piece on you for uh, Parade Magazine. Would you let me come over one evening to hang around backstage while you prepare for and do the show? Thanks, Jim Brady, New York, New York. Uh, you know, Jim, this sounds like a, a wonderful idea, and we really encourage this kind of journalistic participation. But we have had, you know, a couple of negative experiences when we allow reporters into the tense and pressurized atmosphere that exists backstage before each show. And I think you get an idea what I'm talking about from this recent cover story here. Yeah, we weren't really too pleased with the way this one turned out, but so perhaps we'll consider it in the future. <laughs> little dictator or craze. Are you all right, Paul? Are you all right? Are you okay? I'm fine. I, okay, I thought you went away there for a I'm second. I'm with you, no. Letter number three. Dear Dave, wake up. If you want higher ratings for your show, add some pizzazz. Johnny Carson, for instance, ends his opening monologue with his famous golf swing. This is what you need, Dave, a catchy gimmick to signal the end of your monologue. Oh, I think I have an idea. People know when I'm done. Um, let's see. Sincerely, John Moran, Glenford, New York. Well, John, you know, uh, we did uh, try that when the show first began. We had kind of a little gimmick that we did at the end of the opening remarks, but it uh, really didn't work out. We had to stop doing it. How? Do we have a videotape of the old show where we used to do that? thing there at the start of the program. We don't do it anymore because it just didn't So you see it. then David Stockman turns to Jody Foster and says, but that's the point. I'm not wearing any underwear. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I really enjoyed that myself. Uh, we have a wonderful program for you folks tonight and it's all going to begin in just about one minute. Thanks for coming, folks. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Thank you very much. So you see, we... We don't do that anymore. Letter number four. What? <laughs> I've lost my mind. Just, ig just ignore me. Just can you fade the picture down and just listen to the sound tonight? I what the hell is that? Stop. <laughs> you see them, don't you, Paul? They're all over me, aren't they? <laughs> Dave, it's been it's a long... It's this heat! Dave, it's been a, it's been a long week. <laughs> it certainly has. Uh, if we can get somebody in here with a rivet gun to put an end to this thing. Uh. <laughs> uh, dear Dave, uh, dear sirs, a few months ago I mailed you photographs of a kind elderly lady from the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. The snapshot showed her looking a lot like Larry Bud Melman. 
This lady is still waiting in Rochester to see if anything is going to become of her photographs. Thank you, Dean J. Disher, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Well, Dr. Disher, you know, we really did get those photographs that you sent of that woman, uh, but we decided not to feature them on the show because they really didn't look that much like Larry Budd. Here, take a look. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Let me just put this up here. Okay. Now, uh, yeah, here is the uh, picture you sent us of the elderly woman there at the Mayo Clinic. And I'll have to agree, there is a little similarity. Now, here is a picture taken recently of Larry. Now, take a close look at this. How can we get a tight shot of the picture of Larry? There, there it is right there. Now, I think you can notice this harmonica-shaped object that's been embedded in his brain since 1948. It happened during a freaky, a freak, uh, a freak, what was it, Kevin? A camping accident, that's what it was. Happened during a camping accident. So they don't really look anything alike, do they? There's no harmonica in this woman's brain, is there? And, but there's one over here. Do you see that one over there? Okay, once again, this woman doesn't have a harmonica. And, but yet, oddly enough, Larry does have a harmonica. Thank you, thank you. Look, doing it again. I'm delirious. Uh, letter number five, and not a minute too soon. This letter is sent to you for good luck. The original copy is in New England. It has been around the world nine times. The luck has now been sent to you. You will receive good luck within four days of receiving this letter, provided you in turn send it back out. This is no joke. Well, none of these others have been either. Um, <laughs> This <laughs> Dallin Fairchild received the letter and not believing threw the letter away. Nine days later, he died. Remember, send no money. Please don't ignore this. It works. Well, you know what this is, don't you, Paul? This is uh, it's a chain letter. It's just a bunch of superstitious junk. I mean, designed to play on the fears of ignorant, gullible jerks. Don't, don't these uh, things just make you kind of sick, Paul, these uh, chain You're letters? You're right. They're, it's insulting, actually. That, it certainly that is. Somebody would actually send you that trash. That's right. So I, I'm just going to throw it away, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, on the other hand, uh, some of the stories were a little bit creepy. A little bit creepy. Okay, I tell you what, I'll, instead of me throwing it away, here's what I'll do. I'll get somebody to throw it away for me. You mean like a, a stand-in? Yeah, exactly. I'll get a stand-in, an actor or somebody. Do we have, an we have that guy who was here earlier, the actor, standing by back there? Just stand Hi, in. come on out. You're, you're an actor, are you, sir? Uh, actually, Good. I'm an actor-singer. Actor-singer. Great, actor, that'll be singer. fine. Why don't you uh, do me a favor and have a seat right okay. there. Now... What we want you to do is just take this letter, mm -hmm. crumple it up, and toss it away. Okay. All right, good luck. We'll see what happens. I have an, I have an actor singer here to take care of this for us. Go ahead, anytime. Okay. Go ahead. Actor singer. Oh, God. Whoa, he took quite a blow there. You all right? Wow, that's. That's too darn bad, hey, isn't it? Hey, hey, What's hey. What's the matter? Hey, wake up. Hey, hey, you, hey. He, he's dead! Oh, no, no. The actor singer is no, dead! No, no. It happened again! No. We've killed two actor singers! <laughs> I don't know. That's like killing four people! Four people, yeah. I can't believe it! <laughs> I can't. It'll, it'll be all right, Paul. Try, try and get a hold of yourself. See, there... It's not like somebody... It's not like an ordinary person. I mean, somebody in the entertainment world. <laughs> you know what he told me backstage? What, what did he say backstage? He said that he was a dancer. <laughs> he, was... he was an actor, singer, dancer. Oh, my he God. He had the world stretched out in front of him. He, you know, he was up for a pun in Lacage. No, I, I didn't know he was, that. You know, you, you, you will never get an actor singer on the show again, okay. I'm telling you. All right, it's well, your fault. No, it's not it's my fault. It's your fault. I have nothing to you do with it. You killed him. No, I didn't kill you him. You were supposed to be sitting there. No, you were supposed to be there. The you killed him. All right. Damn this network budget. Why can't they afford girders that stay up? Oh, I tell you what. Why do right. so many have to die? <laughs> okay, it'll be all right, Paul. Oh, all right. Really? Really? We'll be right back with Jonathan.
hospital on the actor's Oh, a medical bulletin, Hal? Okay, a live report from the hospital. There is Dr. Morton Roberts, Manhattan County Hospital. Yes, uh, Dr. Roberts, good of you to be with us this evening. What, what can you tell us? Yeah, Mr. Letterman, uh, the patient has sustained some serious trauma to the upper body. Uh-huh, well, that uh, seemed apparent. Yeah, it is apparent. Uh, he's young, he's strong, and we view his condition with guarded optimism. Well, that's certainly good point. news. Yeah, it is good news. Uh, there's an excellent chance he'll be able to act again. Uh -huh. uh, but I'm afraid we place his chances of singing at less than 10 percent oh well that's a darn shame but but paul thank you very much doctor we'll thank check you, back Mr. with Leonard. you a little bit later but did you hear that paul he's going to live he's going to act he may not sing again but he's going to live and act it's something <laughs> at least it's something <laughs> yes. he can do something he can, he can act but he can't sing well so maybe he can't do music because he'll concentrate right. on drama it's a, it's a little he can still work yeah you know he probably wasn't much of a singer probably not anyway no. probably, usually probably actor, more singers are usually <laughs> They're one or the other. More of an actor, yeah. He was an actress, but he's more of an actor, fine. so now that, right. you know, That's he's great. got something he can concentrate on. Why don't you on. go over there? And, and the, with the dancing, yeah. forget about it. Yeah. <laughs> We're doing comedy here tonight, aren't we? I tried to do that. Well, you did it well. You did it well, Paul. I tried to do that. John of the Waiter's standing oh, backstage. Ah, pudding pops. <laughs>